In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gospel of September the 4th, 2017. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to bring glad, glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Eliah, when the sky was closed for three and a half days, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of this that Eliah was sent, but only to a widow in, in Sarepha, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet no one of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, brought him out of the town, and led him to the brow of a hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If I could name my homily today something, I would call it this way. Humbleness is the door to the heart of God. What exactly are we reading today? Um, the Lord, the Lord Jesus is coming back from after his victory over Satan in the desert. On the appointed time he was led into the desert for 40 days to be tempted, but he prevailed against the devil, against Satan. And now that he is ready, he comes back to start his ministry among us. And he chose to go into his place, into Nazareth's synagogue, where on a Saturday, according to the custom, he stood up to read, and he found Isaiah's chapter where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Evangelisare pauperibus, it is written. Precisely that those words, to bring glad tidings to the poor, is this slogan of Saint Eugene of Massino, the founder of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate. They are particularly close to me, thanks to my teacher of um, spirituality in the seminary. I learned quite a bit. He was an Oblate. He is an Oblate. And then he also brought in another very good friend of mine, Father Cunningham, who taught me about uh, Therese of Calcutta. And this year I had the chance to spend a little bit of time helping them. It was really a blessing for me. If you read carefully, see, hear it again. To bring God tidings to who? To the poor. To proclaim liberty to who? To the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind. Go free for the oppressed. And where are the kings and the rich and the powerful and the politicians and the ones that are well off and everything? Did they 
God excluded? Did they get excluded from from God's heart? Not at all. It so happens that in chapter 5 of Matthew, the Lord Himself says, Blessed are those poor in spirit. According to Luke, it will say just, Blessed those who are poor, for there is the kingdom of heaven. So we need to be poor, we need to be humble. A poor, a poor man, a poor woman is one who is humble. That is what we need to do. We have to be humble, otherwise if we are prideful, then we will not receive anything. Then we have this story, real story, that happened in Nazareth. When he wrote that, everybody was happy. Perhaps they were gleaming, thinking that he was going to um, present them with many gifts, many miracles. But all of a sudden they said, no prophet is a prophet in his home. And then he goes and says, there were many widows in Israel, but to none of them Elijah was sent, but only to one in Sarepha. She's a pagan. And then he goes on to say, there were many lepers in Israel, but none of those were cleansed, but Naaman, another pagan. The only thing is that those two pagans believed in God, the two of them. The two of them actually put their lives on God's hand through a foreigner. The widow, hearing and heeding the words of Eliah, prepare first some piece of bread for me and then you will eat. And then Naaman, who went away from his own country and received the humiliation of not even being received by Elisha, but going down into the Jordan's water for seven times. They trust the God, and they received humbly what God wanted. But these people did not. How is it that we behave, dear brothers? Do we believe that we are so great, that we have the power as ordained ministers to command even God, and God will heed to our commandments? Are we not really miscalcul miscalculating, misunderstanding? Of course not. Yes, we are fooled. God is almighty, we are not. There is a, an immense and infinite difference between Him and even the Pope. God is God and will always be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are only His servants. But in His love, He wants to present us with many gifts, but we need to be humble, to gain for ourselves, and we as ordained ministers, to gain for others, otherwise God will not hear us. So let us pray that we might become humble today. May the Lord be with you, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend on you and remain on you forever.